Yeah. <laughs> I'm just sure. I'll do it. All right. Welcome back to the Bonsai Movie Crew. <sighs> another week and another movie. <laughs> what, is, what what episode is this? I uh, God, 20, it's this is 20, 25, isn't it? Uh, is this 25, 25, 6. I'm going to say 24. I think I'll it's 25. I think it's 25, too. I'm saying 24. So. Well, I'm going to look at it and find out. Because I can. I'm pretty sure this is pod 25. Nope. It's 24. Ha-ha! 24. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next week for 25. For 25. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Shortest podcast ever. That's what ever. we thought. <laughs> yep. uh, all right, well, this week... Um, first off, I want to go through and throw a few things out there. I, uh, I didn't tell you guys. My cousin Megan is making us some... Uh, what do they call those... Um, audio segue. Uh, She's getting those segways? Well, they're like, yeah, segways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they have, have our logo. Here, yeah. <laughs> they have our logo on them. We can drive them yeah. around. The whole podcast of us just riding them back yeah. and forth. <laughs> They've got our mics on them. We're just riding them around. <laughs> the Bonsai Movie Crew Segway Edition. <laughs> We've gone mobile. <laughs> <laughs> You're rolling around the mall. <laughs> That's pretty empty. You might as well. Just talking right. to people. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so she she does like audio editing and uh, and and picture editing, and she does like audio bites and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I asked her to make us some stuff to get us through like, so like whenever we segue from like the intro into news, and then from like even your trivia, um, and also she's doing one for uh, our reviews, talking about the movie. And things like that. So I've already got some of the. Re- I've already got all the recordings except one. Um, so I don't. I might. I might put them on this this podcast. I guess you'll see. I guess if you're listening to it and you're already hearing them, then they're on. Congrats. Yeah. yeah. So that was my cousin. I wanted to throw. I told her I would throw her name out there and and, and see if uh, anybody. If you ever need anything like uh, audio editing, audio, uh, uh, like. I call them bumps is what I call yeah. them. Audio yeah. bumps. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. Um, then uh, I'll give you her contact info, info for Linktree, and you can go there. You go to her Facebook, her um, uh, uh, whatever other sites she has. I know she's got a Facebook and a couple other sites there that you guys can check out. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it is Linktree.com, but it's, it's, uh, the link is L-I-N-K-T-R- period e e and then this is slash m e g a n a l l s u p that's megan also that's my that's my little cousin i think she's my little cousin we're about the same age so but yeah check her out and uh i told her i'd throw her name out there and i'll throw a link uh i'll throw the link on the description for the video and in the podcast and stuff because she did it for free for me because you know we're related she ain't gonna do it for free for you though just so you're aware and no i don't have any promo code or anything crazy like that she's just starting out just like us so uh check her out and um get a hold of her if if you have promo codes are for rich people promo cards are for rich people and we don't get paid for this we we do this. what cords Cords. (laughs) i thought i said promo cords promo cords yeah promo (laughs) cords yeah so um anyway uh, i also wanted to kind of throw out a few other podcast that i've been listening to uh because this is something i don't think we talk enough about i think that we should support other podcasts if you if you want support from your from the community that you're working in i think that you should probably help support them also so um i don't know what you if you guys listen to any podcast but uh i've been listening to this one called breaking canon the breaking canon podcast they used to only cover like star wars stuff and but they've uh segued away from all that and they've been doing uh what they do is they They'll cover a series of movies. Right now, they are covering the Terminator movies. Um, they've done one, two, three, and Salvation, and they just did Genesis. The next one I believe they're doing is the last one, which is Dark Fate. And uh, they're pretty cool guys. I like listening to them. They're pretty entertaining. Um, and they're like us. They talk about the movie. Uh, they don't get any news or anything like that, but they do talk about some trivia 
and things like that. But they talk very heavily about the movie, and they're guys that love the movies that they're reviewing. So if you like that, then check them out. Also, I listen to the Straight Chillin' Horror Podcast. If you guys are into horror movies, these guys are a lot like um, the Breaking Cannon guys. They're hilarious, and um, they just, I love listening to those guys. I've listened to almost all their podcasts, and they've got like something like 400 episodes. So they're they're pretty awesome. I listen to them a lot. They're probably my favorite podcast. And then uh, I also listen to Development Hell, which is uh, um, which was created by an editor from Dread Central. Um, he covers horror movies that were essentially in development hell, so they were never really made. Um, so, uh, like, you can go and listen to one on uh, the 2018 It, uh, it movie, and uh, he covers the Kerry Fukunaga. Um, he talks about the Kerry Fukunaga um, script that was written, that Kerry Fukunaga wrote, uh, wrote. And it's 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 a lot different than the script that you got for the actual movie, so uh, there's a lot of differences there. But it's a really interesting podcast, and he he goes into detail with some of those. Yeah, he, uh, he also talks. There's another one where he talks about uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space and how they were gonna do as a sequel, and he talks about that. And these are all real things that were talked about but never came to light. Like uh, they were they were in talks of getting Quentin Tarantino to do a uh, uh, Friday the 13th Part 4, I think it was, or something. And that never happened. Um, th- this was obviously back then. But anyway, so talk, uh, check that out. I also listened to the Dead, Dead Meat Podcast, which is another horror podcast. Um, and they don't really do reviews. They more or less talk about the movie, what they liked or didn't like. Uh, they're okay. I would say I started out listening to a lot of their stuff. They're, they only do one-hour episodes every two weeks. And they, uh, it's not, it's not the, I mean, I start like, they were like one of the first podcasts that I listened to and they were, they were good, but like, I don't know, some of their, uh, some of their opinions and things get on my nerves a little bit, so, but they're good. They're good to listen to. And then obviously I have to throw my daughter in the mix here. She's got her own podcast now and she covers a horror movie every other week. And then also a, uh, a, a serial killer or a series of murders, every other week so it'll go like a horror movie then serial killer horror movie serial killer and uh and she's she's still she's still in her infancy she's not she's not quite got it down yet but she's getting there very very well actually um and she's being very she does her research she tries her best so and um uh so i i can i cannot recommend that enough and i'm also on that podcast whenever she talks about the serial killers because I like hearing about that stuff. Um, but that's all I got for that. Um, I do have a little bit of... Well, not really. Karen's got some news. I got one. One bit of news. One bit of news, because it interested me. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but... So, um... The uh, Rick and Morty thing. Them getting rid of... Oh, uh, with Dan... Uh, or uh, Damn it, what's his name? Uh, Justin Roiland? Yeah, getting rid of Justin Roiland. Because mm-hmm. um, he like... Because of those domestic charges? Yeah. yeah. But, like, this, this is why I kind of felt like I had to talk about it a little bit. Because, like, so what I don't get is, like, a few years back he was messaging, like, little girls and stuff. Was that him? Yeah, and then Dan Harmon's done kind of the similar thing. Dan Harmon did a, a short video, a short uh, film, where it was like a Dexter parody, only instead of killing bad guys he had sex with uh with um disobedient child babies and yeah, it was really fucked up and it was also, very uncomfortable he also had allegations though like, i believe that yeah of like little kid i believe uh, that. like messaging little yeah. kids and stuff so they've both been in trouble for like creeper stuff like yeah. back in the day but they're gonna fire justin roiland over domestic violence Right, instead, and they're going to keep Dan Harmon, who's yeah, because it's not okay to beat a woman up, but it's okay to message little girls. The whole dude, I love love Rick and Morty. It's yeah, one of my favorite sure. cartoons. But sure. dude, those two are fucked up. Like they're well, yeah. I mean, okay, you can't tell me that <laughs> if you watch that show that those those things come from normal minds. Okay, 
That's true. I'm just saying, like, okay. <laughs> Those things come from normal minds. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, like, they're not normal thinking people. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying that, like, you know, obviously their creative genius comes from a dark place and that whatever. They say a lot, most comedy comes from dark places. Right. What I'm getting at, though, is the studio or, like, the the people behind well, the they've firing. jumped around so much because they were on hulu they were on hbo i, I don't know where honestly i don't even know I'm where just, to watch it anymore. i'm just saying that like your standards are fucked right like you're gonna you're gonna fire him over domestic violence but these fuckers are like creeping on little girls but that's okay that's okay that that where I, we draw the I line no is idea, like hitting man. a woman in the face i yeah but anyway, um, but the uh, the internet has spoken. The largest push to replace him for um, voices is mm -hmm. Danny DeVito and Charlie Day. They want them to voice for Rick and Morty. <laughs> Rick and Morty. <laughs> they want I could Charlie... totally get behind Charlie Day doing Morty. <laughs> they yeah. want Charlie Day 100%. to do Morty, and they 100%. want Danny DeVito to. And they don't even care that the voices don't match. They want them to do it with their regular okay, I, voices. I can see that, dude. Yeah, one, I could totally yeah. get behind that. So anyway, that's the that's the bright spot in the story. I'm sorry I brought it down a little bit with my kind of. I say, where is opinion. this going? But, You're uh, making me upset. No, I'm bringing I'm bringing it up again. You're that that is where the internet spoke. Back. Yeah, I'm bringing it back. I just had to bring that out there a little bit. You know, where things are just so fucked. They are so fucked right now. So fucked. But anyway, yeah. So um, the leading leading push is for Charlie Day and Danny DeVito to take it over. So I don't I don't disagree. I don't think that. Dan Harmon or Justin Roiland are good people by any means. I think they're bad fucking people. And but at the same time, who do you, what do you do nowadays, man? You got either really terrible people or you got these woke psychos. What do you do? like? Where do we get to stand here? Because you have to. If you're not with either of them, you're against both of them. Right. So I don't. This is where I'm just like, dude, just leave me alone. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. Leave me the I, fuck alone. Well, and that, that's kind of why what I'm we don't saying. get into politics and stuff like that yeah. on here because <laughs> right. I don't want nothing to do with any of it. I don't well, want that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, you can't watch that show and think that that stuff comes from like a normal mind, right. like from a mind like mine or yours, or mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Like, I can't think of those kind of things, but I also don't want to know what's going on in their head. You know, I, right. I you know, because I laugh at it. I think it's hilarious. Um, I also don't agree that. They're firing him for that, but this is going on, and that's okay. Yeah. I, I don't. I, it's a double thing, and I just I can't wrap my mind around it. I'd rather I just, fire somebody that's trying to message little girls. And, right. Okay. As, that's what she's saying. Is they that's what been I'm fired getting a at. Long time ago. They should have. If they're gonna fire them, they should have been fired. A long they should. But well, they're not firing Dan Harmon, and he's still a creeper. That's my point. That's the point I'm making is that they're they're getting all up in arms about Justin Roiland. Who I just don't understand how has a domestic they, they've violence. They've got like an 80 episode contract yeah and they don't have like how are they going to fill these episodes without the creators you know what i mean like justin Roiland's officially gone mm -hmm. so dan Harmon's one step away from being a goner right and he does one more stupid thing they're gonna be like dude we just can't do it anymore with you i so, i don't know i, I guess at that point i mean at I that guess point you just in time the contract. They're, they're just gonna either they're voiding the contract and canceling the show or they're gonna try to get some other creative minds in there and muddle on it won't work but yeah. it'll they'll muddle, you know kind of like what they did with but the what witch. if it did though oh man like what if I it don't did know. work because <laughs> they're you know get mike judge in there yeah there you go. Yeah, yeah there you go he did king of the hill and i don't yeah I, see and that's the thing too like you got people like mike judge and stuff and like god i you pray never that he did didn't anything wrong yeah. <laughs> you know and he's a comedic genius he did such funny shit yeah Anyway, King of the I, Hill, baby, King of the Hill, and Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, but anyway, uh, move on. Move that on that was all my news. That was all I had. All your news. Yeah, that was it. Um, I've got, uh, I've got a few trailers to share with everybody. Um, I didn't really. There wasn't a really a whole lot for me going on this week. Okay, so there's a trailer out for a movie called The Boogeyman. Um. This is not a sequel to the 2000... Shithole. 2000 whatever. Yeah, the shithole. <laughs> piece of shit Shit heel. And then it spawned two sequels. The other one did? Yeah. It had two sequels. I had no idea, yeah. idea that it had sequels there at all. There was Boogeyman 2 and Boogeyman 3, and I didn't watch those, but I watched the first one, and that movie was a pile of dog shit. That movie was not... I never liked that movie. Did it have any, did it have any box office money that it pulled in? Which one? The first one. Because oh, sometimes know. they make sequels just because it pulled in box office. Well, money. I think the sequels are straight to DVD. 
kind of oh. no name bullshit. Um, so this movie actually looks good. This is a Stephen King adaptation, so mm. um, it, it could be good. It, the trailer looks good. It looks scary. Um, it doesn't look cheap or cheesy like that old one did. I don't even know what the old one year it came out. But if you're interested in that, check that out. It does look really good, and you can find that on on YouTube. Um, next, we have a big George Foreman trailer, which actually looks pretty good. It's a boxing movie about George Foreman oh. yeah. and his younger days and uh, how he... Uh, is it sad that my mind went straight to the grill? The grill? No, not at all. <laughs> that's like, real, let's face it, that's what he's best thinking, known is for. Is it a cooking show? <laughs> let's face it, that's what he's best known for. So, George Foreman, uh, if, for nobody who knows who George Foreman is, uh, he's not just a, a burger grill guy. <laughs> no, I mean, I knew he was. <laughs> yeah, but... he's a boxer, and he, uh, I think he was a world heavyweight, he was a heavyweight champion or something yeah. like that, um, and then something happened. And he decided to go into like preaching and priesthood and things like that. Uh, put on a bunch of weight, and then I guess money got tight or something. And he had to go back to um, back to boxing while he was a heavier set guy. They're like, you don't have to be a ripped guy to be a boxer, man. No, you really so don't. he went back in, and he was a heavy he was a heavyweight champ. I, I don't know if he ever won the heavyweight championship again. Um, after he went back in, yeah, I think he did. He might have. But George Foreman was always known as one of those uh, nicer, better kind of, one of those nicer kind of boxers. One of those guys who was always kind of a stand-up kind of athlete. Sorry. Yeah, kind of. Sorry. He was always super polite, kind of like Muhammad Ali. And uh, who was the other one that was really, really sweet and polite? There was another one like that, but they were just like really down-to-earth sweet guys. And just because they know how to punch people in the face doesn't make sense. Didn't he name like all of his kids George? George Foreman. I'm thinking he did. George I remember. I remember re- reading something like even his daughter or daughters was like George or something. George. Like that. Yeah. Wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> yeah. Like, how do you know which one they're talking yeah, to? How, which one? Did they? Like, I think they called them by their middle names, but all of their first names were George. Why not just make their middle names George? <laughs> no, ask George. So dumb, George. You're an idiot. <laughs> it's a good thing you got that grill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm just kidding, man. Don't punch me. <laughs> he'll he'll apologize afterwards. And then my nose will be on the side of my face. <laughs> and then nose it will be gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what happened? Got I just, I'll never it, like that's like Mike Tyson, dude. I can. I would if I saw him. I don't think I could talk to him. No doubt, you'd be scared. I'd be scared to punch you'd me. Say the one, one wrong thing because he will punch you. Yeah. He will yeah. deck you in the face. Yeah. I'm not talking he's, about that. He's guy. really. And I, I have a big now. fucking mouth. I have a Mike big Tyson mouth. Mike Tyson has came down that that troop. Like big time, I guess. But still, there's always that like. There's always that chance. He's he, become yeah. like a very big sweetheart now. I believe that, but he was but, also uh, like he punched that guy on the airplane. Well, yeah. So, he would too if somebody. <laughs> somebody's talking shit. Maybe kept on, I don't know, kept man. on, kept on pushing and pushing and pushing, and finally something. I don't know. Snap. I feel like like I just say one thing wrong, and Tyson's just got too much ghetto in him. Still, he's ready to fight. Yeah. That and that tattoo on his face doesn't make him look like a nice person. No. <laughs> Still right. screams, I'll punch you in the fucking face. I got face. one more. Uh, I'm sure you would. One more um, trailer here. This is for a, um, an Amazon series called The Power. Um, it's got Tony Collette in it, uh, uh, John Leguizamo. Um, it's about these girls in school get they, these girls start to, girls start to develop. I guess they develop an extra organ that gives them a power of electricity. It looks interesting. They don't really say too much about what the show's about, other than there's some kind of like revolution happening in there somewhere i don't know but it looks good it's got tony collette and john logazamo i'm down so uh check out the trailer it's called the power it's gonna be coming to amazon and last but not least that's it (laughs) (laughs) okay i think think that's it hold on there's a murder mystery too that trailer just dropped didn't i did i not did i i I didn't talk about that last week i don't think i think i did didn't i I don't Maybe. think I did. I don't think I did. I think you're right. I know you sent the message to us this week. Yeah, I don't That's think I did. I was um, it up. Yeah, I don't think I did. Okay, yeah. Um, and also about that uh, DC announcement from James Gunn. I'm not going to sit here and explain to you everything that happened with that whole announcement. What's leaving, what's staying, what he's doing new. If you want to check that out, get on YouTube. There's an entire video. It's like a two or three minute video 
and he goes through and talks about everything that they'll be doing and what they're taking away. Uh, just know that Henry Cavill isn't returning, and neither is Gal Gadot. I don't know if Ben Affleck's coming in any capacity other than they might let him direct a movie. I'm not sure what is going on with him. Um, but other than that, like they're just kind of trying to rebrand the whole DCEU thing. And I'll let you guys get in and check that out. I'm not going to get mixed up in that too much. Um, I'm going to let everybody else just check that out and and just know that there's some there's some real uh, shit bags in there that I'm like, eh, I'm not interested. Like, they're making an Amanda Waller TV series, and I'm like, why? Nobody cares about Amanda Waller. <laughs> you know? Do I even so, know who that is? She's uh, played Viola Davis in... Um, um, in the Suicide Squad movies. Oh, so, okay. I like Viola Davis. I think she's a great actress. Um, and but I just I don't care for her character. Um, honestly, it's probably one of my least favorite Viola Davis characters. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, um, let's go ahead and move on. Hold on. Mm. Okay. I didn't have to take the picture. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so moving on, let's move into uh, what everybody's been watching. Eric, what you been watching, buddy? Oh, so I watched... Uh, oh, hell, I gotta get my notes out. He wasn't prepared. I was not. He was looking at you, so I was, like, thrown off. <laughs> <laughs> he did a rope-a-dope. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so I watched Young Guns 2. I had to watch the second one. Nice, dude. I love Young Guns. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. I haven't seen those movies. I, now I kind of want to watch them. Mm -hmm. They're on uh, Amazon Prime. And Burbs. I still haven't got around to watching that. That's still on Netflix. That. Yeah. Man, yeah. I'm telling you what. Movies like that, you get a hankering sometimes. Just get into yeah. some old movies like that. Then I uh, watched Jurassic World Dominion. I haven't watched it. You haven't watched it? It's, it's pretty good. I, I stopped I after them. the third. I haven't seen anything since the third one. You should watch the ones with Chris Pratt in them. The ones with Chris I, Pratt. I, Pratt I, I don't disagree i, I don't know about the i've seen one, the fir the first one and the the last one i still haven't seen the second one though of these of the, the newer ones? ones the second yeah, one was okay i haven't gotten the chance to to rent it or anything like that mm. the other ones are, have been out for free but the second one for some reason has not came out i hate streamed. it when they do that like when a streaming channel will get like one three seven like <laughs> dude yeah yeah you need to keep it in order uh then i watched the gentleman with uh, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, well, uh, the, Matt, well, that's a loaded cat. That's a Guy Ritchie movie. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good flick, great, though. Yeah, it's a great yeah, movie. I love yeah, Guy Ritchie movies. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> I've been... Today I've, I've been starting to watch that Samaritan. I haven't gotten all the way through I it thought yet. about checking it out. So far, what I've seen, I, I've enjoyed it. I just haven't been able to actually sit down and watch it. I've been like, okay, I gotta go do this, so I'll stop it. I gotta go do this, stop it. I'm like... I still have like 30 minutes left to watch. <laughs> So, but as what I've seen, it's it's pretty good. I enjoyed it. So, that's about all I got to watch. Karen, what the I, hell you been watching? <laughs> I finished that two sentence horror stories, um, and then I watched that uh, the Texas Killing Fields. I finally got around watching that one. Did you? Yeah. Uh, I watched Twenty One Jump Street, the movie. <laughs> I, I'd never seen it. Never, never seen that's it. That's funny as shit. It is a funny it's fucking, fucking movie. Hilarious. Yeah, it's funny that's as shit. That's a good shit. movie. Is that I the loved one it when. Uh, oh, that's the second one. I'm thinking. Never mind. I haven't seen the second one yet. Yeah. I, I yeah. The first one's watch. better, but the second one is worth watching. Yeah. Oh, you know, I plan to watch it. I just haven't Where's seen it yet. Dayton? Yeah. <laughs> um, I finished Paradise PD because they just came out with the the fourth season, and that was going to be the last season. So I finished that. If you guys have not watched that, I've seen like one episode. I'm what is it? Watch it. Paradise, uh, Paradise PD. PD. Do not Netflix. watch it with your kids. Okay, I've yeah. seen Do clips not. of it. I've not actually. No, seen like you'll be tempted yet. to. Like in season one, you'll be tempted to, but don't. No, because I, I, as I already, it goes, I've seen, I've seen clips on it. I'm not. Gonna as it goes, watch, but, it is progressively worse and worse and worse. Like season four, I was like, "Am I old enough to watch this?" <laughs> like <laughs> there was like parts in season four. I'm like. There, there should be a warning for me. Like, no, I mean, it was, it's really freaking funny. Is it just raunchy or is it it's like really bad? Like, it's, it's just so uh, extreme, I extreme dark humor. Yeah, and 
Yeah. So like nudity and sex and shit. No, 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 no. Just no. raunchy and yeah, and like just, just, just um, the provocative. It, the, yeah, like um, there, there's like there's sex talk, and I mean you see a lot of dicks in season four, like cartoon dicks, but they're not. There's nothing like, you know, like okay, here's something, um, the one guy, like he's like a virgin, he never gets laid, he in the whole thing, um, so he buys a sex toy doll or sex doll or whatever but the sex doll doesn't want him so she buys a sex doll what the fuck and, like, it just, but you, you just, and it, it it just goes on and on it like but nothing you don't really see anything you know what i mean just like very provocative yeah there's just like it, it, like but that's not even most of it like most of it is not like sex humor it's just bad like you don't want your kids to hear it you don't want them to see it kind of stuff you yeah. know but uh yeah if you are an adult check it out hilarious just don't be tempted to let your kids see it in season one uh then we watch farzar because it's made by the same people i'm not getting into that as much though i tried to watch the first episode of that too and i was just kind of like and my kids were in the room yeah and i was just like this probably isn't appropriate for my kids yeah i'm not getting into that as much though like i'm i've i've watched i think like four episodes four or five episodes and i'm like yeah i'm just not feeling this one uh i watched the guilty that was a movie uh with um jake gyllenhaal where he's like a 911 oh, yeah. operator that was really good uh i watched an episode of a show called paranormal that i've been wanting to see uh didn't care for it so i got rid of it and then uh, I watched you season three not all of it i'm trying to get back into it because i need to finish it uh, I'm, I gotta I'm say, season it. three was the worst season so Yes, far. like, I'm not feeling it. I'm probably gonna finish this, and I'm done. I don't want anything to do There's only doing one season. more season. I don't care. I'm gonna watch the last season. I don't care. Like, he's I'm a, over it. He's a completionist. He has yeah. to finish it. My problem is, like, he spent all this time looking for the perfect person. And he found her. He found and her, and now he doesn't want her. Not good enough, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. No, I'm over it's it. It's annoying as shit. Yeah, I'm over it. Like, I'll probably finish the season, then I'm over it. Uh, I fucking watch Violent Night. Yes. His motherfuckers told him. <laughs> it's good. It's I mean, it's all awesome. you got to say is it's good. <laughs> um, Jeremiah will laugh when he hears this. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about a movie, and he said, yeah, what movie was it? Uh, the Quick and the Dead. And we were talking about it, and we were talking about how good it was or whatever. And he's like, it's nice. And the way he said it, I was like, was it renovated? It's got nice bathrooms now. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, it, it was it was really good. Um, I, I kind of disagree with your assessment, though, like, I didn't think John Leguizamo was too bad. I didn't. I. I mean, he was just kind of one note. Yeah, man. he wasn't. Yeah, was he wasn't it? charismatic, really, in yeah. a lot of ways. I just think he was the boss. That's exactly all he was. Yeah, that's that. He played I his think, character. That's who he was. I don't know. I think he could have put a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. I emphasis agree. And, and you know, what I mean, he could have put did more you catch, the character. I'll ask you: Did you catch the guy that was supposed to be on the icicle, but then he was gone? Like you um, see the guy fall out of the, the window. Oh yeah, he gets yeah, yeah. Impaled, yeah. And then later on, you you see where he fell, but mm -hmm. the body's gone. Yeah, the body's gone. Yeah, I see There's that. No body. Movie mistake. Yeah, movie mistake. Or it's Christmas That's, magic. Yeah, it too. could be Christmas. <laughs> well, maybe the the reindeer are hungry. Well, they weren't even. They were there. gone. They they took they off. Well, they might have come down and got the body and went back up. <laughs> Take this home to Mrs. Claus. Yeah, <laughs> she'll make something good out of it. <laughs> uh, then I watched a movie called Strange Days so I've been wanting to see it finally came on I've I think it was that. HBO I didn't care for it yeah. it was very forgettable yeah. very it could have been so much better didn't care for it Alone in the Dark is that the one with uh, <laughs> Christian Slater <laughs> yeah I have to say that's though, actually a, a based off a of video game yeah it is I, I have to say like I you know kept hearing about how bad it is and of course I'm like yeah cool bad movie I'll watch it um that is probably the most put together Uve Bowl movie I've ever seen. And that's not saying much, <laughs> but it still is. Like, it's probably the most coherent. Probably one. because it already had an existing story from the video game. So did all the other ones that he's done mm -hmm. Blood Rain. Oh, yeah. Uh, House of the Dead. Blood Rain so could have been so much better. And Blood Rain lost its cool with me whenever they showed her tits. I was like, really? Like, we don't need to see the main House character. House of the Dead, naked. he's like intercutting pieces of the fucking video game in the middle of the movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, 
he had inner he had coherent plot lines to work with. Yves Bull just is terrible, mm -hmm. but you should still watch Postal. That's that's fucking great. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, there's a new show out with uh, Natasha Leone called Poker Face. Yeah. Fucking watch it. And what's that on? Uh, Peacock. It's on Peacock? Yes, it is so good. Yeah. And in the first episode, you're going to see a guy. That... Wait, oh, yeah, she's your she's your woman crush. Oh, right? yes, yes. I would go lesbian for her in two seconds. I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why. She's oh, I she's don't know. funny and shit. I, I think she's great. I got, she's trashy as shit. Yeah, I don't, that, I don't, you just like trashy bitches. I guess I like trashy she women. She likes that raspy voice. Yeah, pro yeah, I do. Probably I do. Is, yeah. But in the first episode, if you guys don't watch any other thing, at least watch the first episode for me because there is a real life Greaser Greg. You guys watched uh, Garbage Pail Kids? Remember Greaser Greg? Yes, no, I remember. <laughs> There's a real life Greaser Greg. Like he walks out, and I'm like, "Is that fucking Greaser Greg?" He looks just like him. I'm not short kidding. And a little scrunched up face. Well, he's not it. short. He's like a regular sized dude, but he looks like a like a real life Greaser Greg. That's fucked up. Um, but anyway, if you guys yeah get a chance, check it out. It's very good. Very very good. Um, and that's it. That's all I watch. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Just because you said it, I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, fuck you. Uh, you're, you're, you're missing out, not me. Uh, I watched a few show. things this week. Um, I told everybody last week that we've been watching Vox Machina, The Legend of Vox Machina on Amazon. Me and my daughter finished the first season of that, and she's been bugging the shit out of me about getting into the second season, which I think there's only like four episodes out right now, so I'm like, I don't want to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't want to start it yet because there's so many, there's, there's so much to, like, I'd have to wait each week for a half hour episode. And I hate yeah, that. Yeah, I kind of, I'm spoiled. We're spoiled now. I know. I didn't well, want to start Poker Face. Watch. I wait till the, uh, the full season. Yeah, I want to wait for the full season, especially it. if they're only half hour episodes. You I know? know. I wanted to wait for Poker Face, but at the same time, I wanted to, like, support a new show, you know, like, show that I was. Yeah, but they got to know that there's a lot of people that aren't going to watch it till it's all out. I guess I, but we there we got there was four episodes when we watched, so I got to watch four episodes. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I mean, um, Vikings. When I said that stuff came out. I, I think I came in like season three, and then like waiting for every other season just sucked, sucked. So I was like, <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to wait for my season. I usually try to do that. It. We did that with Chucky. Actually, we yeah. waited for the whole season to come out, and then we watched it. Yeah. Um. So we watched. The first season, and I, I might cave on her and let her and go ahead and watch, start watching season two with her. Um, so we watched that, and I love that show, man. That might be one of my top favorite shows right now. Again, like it, it would probably have to beat out a few other shows. Um, we watched that '90s show on Netflix. We we finished that. We actually just finished that today. Um, I've heard good things. Dinner. It's it's not bad. It's pretty good. Uh, it has a lot of what made that '70s show so good. And that's what's what's killing it. I don't care much for the main character, like the, um, uh, the little Eric little and Donna's yeah. girl or whatever. I don't care much for her, but the the gay Asian dude is fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> that dude kills it, yeah, dude. He's always got the best one liners. He's so cynical, and I, I, he's my favorite character. He's actually everybody in my house's favorite character. Yeah, we I, all uh, love him. Mila Kunis was talking about when they decided that they were gonna go back on the show. And uh, she said for like two months, um, what's his face? What's her husband? Um, Ashton Ashton Kutcher Kutcher. was walking around the house every time she would say like, where's my jacket? And he goes, damn, Jackie, I don't know where your fucking jacket is. <laughs> you know, like everything she would ask. He was like, damn, Jackie, That's damn, he, Jackie. And he says it in the 90s show, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God damn, Jackie. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they, they make an appearance in there. Eric and Donna do. Eric or Donna and, and, and then Fez is in there. Fez yeah. is in a few episodes. Donna's in a couple of a few episodes. Eric's only in one, and then Eric, Donna, and uh, um, uh, not Hyde, obviously. Yeah, Hyde. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Ashton Kutcher and then uh, Mila Who's Kunis. Who's that guy? Who's Hyde? They're, yeah, right. Uh, they're all in the first episode. So yeah. um, it sucks what happened with Hyde, man. Stupid yeah. ass. Why yeah. doing stupid shit? Because he was he was the best character from. The, the original show. Yes, he was. Um, What's your granddaughter's intention with my son? <laughs> yeah, well, he was also the best character in The Ranch, if you guys have ever seen that. I watched uh, a few episodes of it and then kind of lost interest, but yeah, it's I agree. It's pretty good. It, it's yeah. a good show. Um, we watched all those, but 
Uh, so we watched that, and I got a, I, 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 I like it. I, I, I figure they're gonna renew it. They're gonna do another season. So I'll watch, I gotta I'll ask though, how are the, how are the kids in it, but their parents aren't like. So um, the girl who's Eric and Donna's daughter go to stay with her grandparents for the summer, oh. and that's how the other kids like the, uh, the one girl and her brother live in Donna's old house next door, and, um, uh. And then she, they kind of come in with their group of friends, and that's how she becomes friends with all their friends. Okay, all right, so, that makes sense. And then sense. that's where like the Asian girl and the Asian gay boy Ozzy comes in, and and so it's it's a good little mix up though. They're all good characters, really. Okay. Um, same as like, and then like her brother is friends with uh, the Kelso boy, which is uh, which is weird because the Kelso boy lives there, lives in Point Place, but you never see. Kelso or Jackie, they only see them well, in the they're first. Probably like working parents now. Yeah, they're they're they're, I mean? they're only in the first episode, but they have a son together who dates the foreman girl. So yeah, but I mean, I guess really, like, how often do you see the parents? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I get it. You never and really it's seen fine. Hyde's parents or... Well, or, Hyde didn't really have Hyde parents. Hyde didn't have parents. Well, it, well Kelso, you never you really You didn't see his, his parents family. at all. Yeah. You never met his parents. Yeah, you or, really only saw Eric's parents, so Eric's, it makes sense Eric that the only people that you parents. ever really see are the grandparents because it's their house. Like you said, the only people you really seen was Eric's parents and Don, Don's yeah. parents. It doesn't, I mean, it makes sense that you're not really going to see his parents that much. Yeah, and the girl that plays their mom... That lives in the house, that Donna's old house. You see her quite a bit. Yeah, so, it, yeah. so that and makes she's sense. She's another comic relief. She's actually a really good character, too. Uh, she actually dates Fez. Yeah. Which is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Fez is a great character, too. Oh, yeah, show. Fez was great. Um, so I watched that. I watched um, um, The Raid, Redemption. I've seen it several times. Just a good action flick, a lot of beat em up. So uh, if you guys, uh, it's an. Uh, I'm not sure where the movie takes place it's a good movie though check that one out um i've been watching the last of us on hbo um there's three episodes out now and it's really good really really good this last episode was really good and it didn't even have the two main characters in it that much but like it dives into like uh another side character from the game and he's a gay man who has i don't know he's like a prepper but like from beginning to end, dude, and he's played by um, damn it, what's his name from uh, Parks and Recreation? Oh, uh, Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman, yeah, played by Nick Offerman. He does such a good job. It is such a good episode. You know, everybody's always so surprised at how good of an actor he is, but he really is. I mean, he's oh yeah, he kills he's, it. He's I an amazing. He actor. kills it. I haven't got to play the game yet, so I'm kind of wanting to play the game before I start watching the show. Right. See, that's my excuse. Like everybody's like, "Oh, you need to watch the show." I'm like, "I've never even played the game." I you guess maybe to. I know. I I guess I, I, I probably I don't need, don't need to, to. But I've always been wanting to play the game. So if you don't want to play the game, if you want to watch the sh- movie or the show, I'd watch the show because if you try to play the game and go into the show, you're like, "Well, this ain't like the game." Whenever really, actually, I've heard that it's pretty close because I didn't play the whole game. That's I only what I, I heard too. I heard a lot of it was shot for shot. Yeah, Jeremiah played the game like a lot, yeah. and he says he's he but loves the creator, it. the creator of the show or of the game, is on set, and he's the writer and creator of the of the whole thing. And so yeah, it, he I, said that there's a lot of things that he's able to do with the show that he couldn't do with the game. Well, and oh, that's yeah. the thing that people have to understand, and I even understand that is a, you know I read a lot, you know, and I love books, but even when a book is transitioned from a book to a movie, there's different. Me- there's different things. media you have to make certain concessions from media yeah to you media. can't draw yeah, out you I can't mean, draw out these long cinematic parts for a game whenever the game is meant to be played not mm-hmm. watched you know what i mean right so from media to media there's always gonna yeah. be changes and but I, I couldn't recommend it more like it is a really good show it's very very good and i think everybody like that girl's getting a lot of slack for not looking like ellie and and this and that and and they're making fun of her appearance, which really pisses me off because yeah. there's nothing wrong with that girl. Uh, she's doing a fine job. I think she's great in the show. Yeah, I think uh, it's about her acting skills. Yeah, oh yeah, she does awesome, like. dude. She's an awesome character. Just because she doesn't match the yeah. person that played in the game, doesn't um, mean the guy who plays Joel, uh, uh, Pedro Pascal, he's killing it. I think they're all doing great. I think it's a great show. Great show. Um, last but not least, I watched. We watched Overlord last night. 
because I hadn't seen it since it came out, and I wonder why. I bought it on Blu-ray and never took it out of the package. <laughs> that so, happens to me a lot. I'm so, like, hey, let's watch this. Yeah. We never even opened it. Yeah. Well, oh. now's the time. Yeah, let's Get let's the bottle of wine out. <laughs> Rip let's it celebrate. open. Let's go. Let's christen this bitch. <laughs> so we watched that. Um, definitely better the second time. Like, I watched it the first time. I was like, yeah, it was okay. Watched it the second time. I was like, man, this movie is so fucking good. What's better than mixing, like, crazy-ass zombies with World War II and Nazis? Like, that is some quality, Mick, that is a quality batch of stew, man. Watching them kill Nazi zombies. It's good shit. If you like gore and violence and action and... You know that... That's it. What's that one show? Uh, is it Red Snow? Or the, yeah, the, the yeah. Nazis. Yeah. On, I yeah. love that freaking movie. That's a good one, too, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that, what's that game? Um... Wolfenstein? Yeah, Wolfenstein. Yeah, Wolfenstein. Hmm. Yep, same thing. <laughs> but yeah, uh... If you, sad. The re, I think the main reason why the movie didn't get as much pull as it could have is because it has lower name, like not well known actors. Sure, but like it's got fucking Wyatt Russell in it, which is like Kurt Russell's son, dude. And you know what? The first time I saw Wyatt, I was like, "What movie?" I don't remember what movie we were watching, but it was the first time I'd ever seen the kid. First time I ever saw him was on uh, um, Black Mirror. No, this was uh, mm. what was that hockey movie he was in? Oh, uh, the one with, um, oh, fuck, Sean Patrick, whatever, Sean, whatever. Yeah, it was, it uh, was made Goon. by, Goon. Yeah, yeah, Goon. Goon. yeah, it was made by, uh, what's his face, the Seth Rogen's friend. But anyway, um, yeah, that was the first movie I've ever seen him in, and I kept looking at him, and I was like, I know that kid from somewhere. I know him from somewhere, and, like, when he would talk, I'm like, God, I, I know, I know this kid. And, like, it went off, and I'm like, yeah, and I, I, I've never seen this kid before. I don't know who he is. And then, like, I was, like, watching the credits, and I'm like... <laughs> Motherfucker. I do like him. He's also I do in, know that kid, but he, I don't know the he kid. He was also <laughs> in uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier show. Yeah. And I think he's great. I think he's a great actor. He's, he is. He's definitely... He's got good action chops. He plays a, a straight-up badass in, in, in Overlord. He plays a hard-ass in Goon. You know, and it's, he's he's got the chops, man. I Here, mean, you know who I thought of when I seen him in Goon was I. Thought, well, he used to be a professional hockey player. Yeah, when I when I saw him in Goon, I thought about um, that kid in uh, was it Mighty Ducks two, the Iceland kid, all grown yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know that asshole Iceland kid. Yeah. I was like, oh, he grew up. He's a fucker. <laughs> <laughs> he's still a fucker. <laughs> all right. Uh, so this week we are talking about. Mathrigan. 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 I even wrote it that way. I did too. With the <laughs> three. Ma- we're talking about Megan. Uh, movie just came out. Uh, it's a 2022 movie. Um, it is PG 13. Comes in an hour and 42 minutes. Stars Allison William, uh, Violet McGraw, and. Uh, Amy Donald as Megan and Jenna Davis as the voice of Megan. Directed by Gerard John Stone. It's not Johnston, it's John Stone. It's like, Get it right. It's weird. It's a weird last name. Um, so, do you have a plot synop? I do. A brilliant toy company roboticist uses artificial intelligence to develop Mithrigan. Mithrigan. <laughs> a lifelike doll programmed to emotionally bond with her newly orphaned niece. But when the doll's programming works too well, she becomes overprotective of her new friend with terrifying results. Terrifying. Not really. No. This movie was not scary. I want to preface real quick um, before we say anything because uh, Alec asked me to send him a gif of what I thought of the movie. Just a gif. What did you send him? I sent him a gif of the dance that she does. Oh. And... He's like, I have no idea what that means. You'll so see. <laughs> let me just tell everyone what that gif meant and why I sent him just the dance. So the dance, as I've said many times before, was the creepiest part of the trailer. Mm-hmm. Right? You say, watch the trailer, you see her dance, and you're yeah. like, ugh. Right? You're like, oh my god, this might actually be Yeah, you're like, scary. oh, this, this might actually be good. Um, and in the movie, it happens so suddenly. And it's very, and it's very quick. It's- yeah, it, it's and very it, it's very poorly utilized. Very poorly utilized. It happens very quick, yeah. and it's so underwhelming. Mm-hmm. So I was completely underwhelmed by the movie, 
So that's why you got the GIF. Underwhelmed. It was very... It, the movie itself... I mean, I watched I watched the movie twice. Did you? I watched it... Ouch. Yeah. Did you... You didn't have anything going on this Well, <laughs> I, wa- I wanted to watch because I was actually excited for the movie. I'm like, this movie might actually be pretty good. I'm like, hell, they, they, were, they announced the fucking number two before it even hit theaters. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, it's got to be good. Um, so I... I was like, all right, well, I want to watch it without having to, like, fucking crank my brain up to nine and take notes. Sure. So I wanted to watch it. So we watched it um, Thursday last week, and and I was like, yeah, I guess it was okay, you know. That's what I thought the first time. But the second time, I watched it last night, and I'm like, this movie is, like, boring as shit. Yeah, it's I don't... boring. Want... They're like, well, it's not really so much scary as it is funny. It's not even funny. No. No, There's nothing not funny about funny. it. It's no. just, just a boring movie about... I mean, don't get me wrong. I think the little girl does fine. And I I, I think everybody in the movie does fine. Yeah, the, the acting is not yeah. the problem. Yeah. There's no problem with the acting at all. It's the fact that... I can tell you what the problem is. And, well, I mean, I don't even remember if, it, if it's something that, like, I... The direction of the movie, in my opinion. Well, it's PG-13. That's the big thing. Yes. I was looking for gore. Yeah, yeah the, I want to see this robot fuck some people up. This movie it was a slasher. Should movie. have yeah. been R, a hard R. Yeah. If, um, if been, you come out with a hard R, I mean, Chad's play did it right. It's a hard R. It's gory, and that's the only way you no, can make a doll scary. Chad's play wasn't even gory. But that's the only way you make a doll scary. Yeah. Is it's got to be R? You've got to make it scary. Yep. You can't do it with PG thirteen. Nope. Yep. Even if you're going for funny, yeah. you cannot do it with PG-13. There wasn't funny thing, anything funny about it, so I don't know how anybody can say that it was funny. That, I, that's right. The only funny part was Ronnie Chang. He was funny, and he was just an asshole. And honestly, because I've seen his stand-up. Yeah, I even put He's on a there, funny like, dude. for once, the angry boss getting down on the original idea is right. Yeah. Like, for once. Yeah. And like, I think that... Uh, there were a lot of things about this movie. Man, I wrote down a lot of notes for this one. Um, so like, for one, the perpetual pets, that fucking commercial was dumb. If yeah. I saw did that you, commercial, did you hear the line in it? Perpetual pets, they last longer than you. do. Yeah, they'll and live this is longer geared than to you. kids. Yeah, they'll live longer than you. Uh, so and I did okay. So you watched it twice. That hotel that they were going to, you see it for like a split second. Was that the Overlook? Uh, hotel. Yeah, when they were going to the ski trip right before they got smashed oh i don't know i don't know i don't think so i thought it was i thought that so i wrote this down the dad is fucking dumb okay so check this out i said i said we all agree the dad is dumb and incompetent is an incompetent pussy that said the car looked like it had four-wheel drive did it (laughs) that's what he said he said well it looked like it had four-wheel drive dude you know whether or not a vehicle has four-wheel drive you're, it literally, there's like a there's little a thing, stick. There's a lot there's of a things stick. that, a stick that says that a, a car button. is four wheel drive. Wow. So, and then four he's like, four. yeah. And then he's yeah, like, yeah, he usually says it on the bumper too. And then yes. he stops the car in the middle of the fucking road. Yeah. In a snowstorm. At least get off. What an idiot. Yeah, why, why nobody the road. stops in a, in a nobody. snowstorm? You don't stop. You don't, you definitely don't stop in the middle of the road. They have to be so from California. So, I, I was like, okay, they were just looking for a reason to kill these people off. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, um, but the perpetual pets thing is dumb. I would not buy my kids a toy that shits. Right? <laughs> so, I'm not doing that. I'm definitely not going to buy them one that farts all Constantly. the time. And thinks it's funny. Um, so, and also, whenever they were working on Megan at the beginning, and they get the mask in, I'm like, do they need that mask to make her work and function? Because they're like, oh, is no, that they it? Just, no, I, they just wanted to make her more human-like. Well, no, human they the, wanted the, the the mask on to see how her facial expressions would show. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. That's when they're testing. Yeah, because they were, remember, they were yeah, saying, like, you're sad. Right. Yeah, you're okay. right. All right. Stuck. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So, um, but I wrote this down. I said, I said, so her head exploding isn't at all a concern for a safety hazard? Well, that's but because no, they, they troubleshooted. They, they, they knew I, why it exploded. Yeah, I know that. They said it was that thing. But, like, what if that thing gets knocked around or loosened or... Whatever, there's a chance that fucker's gonna explode and possibly kill a child. Yeah, I'm sure they've got a safe. I mean, a it was gonna safe kill a child anyway. A but... fail safe? I rolled my eyes and couldn't <laughs> see that. The whole thing should have been a fail safe. Well, that's the thing. You know, they said, "Oh, we've got all these safety things in place so that you know she can't harm somebody." I didn't. What? 
what safe <laughs> well she even mentions it at the end she goes you put a learning system inside of me that you barely understand yes 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 and that's where i said you know people go the lengths people will go to to have bring higher technology in that's not true man thinking. that's not true because th- where this movie really fails is the realism of it for one a, a doll like that a, a like a big ai doll like that nobody's gonna like entrust that thing to their child not knowing what it's capable of doing. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, they did... I don't remember if I wrote this down or if it's just something I kind of thought about. But you remember they they said the price tag for this thing is $10,000. I don't have ten grand to spend on a toy for my kid. Right. You don't. You don't. But who does? Rich people. Rich people. And what else do they have? Good jobs. They have nannies. Oh, nannies, yeah. So they're going to spend ten grand on this doll and go, bye-bye, nanny, I don't have to pay you anymore. Yeah, that's true. They're, that's who they're gearing it for. They know exactly who their, their, their core audience is. Yeah. And you know? There were a lot of points brought up in this movie that I, I 100% agreed with. Um, for one, one of the... Because I thought the therapist was dumb. Now, I... Yes. <laughs> so, so but, I, well, I, hold on. So she comes into the house first, right? And she's like... She's being very, very... Yeah. Still in pajamas. Still in pajamas. Judgmental bitch. Yeah, yeah, very judgmental and very, very rude, honestly. Yeah. Like, for absolutely no reason. So, any, like, any but then whenever she sees them at the... And they'll take notes and yeah. then go about their But day. then whenever they go back, to... whenever they're at the workplace, and she explains to her, like, so you're creating something that could have long-term effects on her attachment the to psychosis. the doll and not helping her grow up in any way. Now, see, I was like, I... now that makes sense. Yes. See, I... I, I have very similar notes because I have my my college degree. degree is actually in psychology and not not that I have a doctorate or anything right I just have a bachelor's degree but that was what my focus was and so like you know she comes in and and the very first thing that they're focusing on and I understand that they were probably using this as a plot point as a way to say like you're not capable of raising a kid or, but she's bitching about her having collectibles and yeah. not letting the kid play with yeah. them. Bitch, you'd come into my house and you'd be like, "Oh my god, this it's place like, is not fit for children like because that's day. everything in my fucking house in the downstairs. There's nothing but collectibles was, and my yeah. kids aren't allowed to touch them." Yeah, well, like, that the thing is is like she should have already expected that, knowing that she didn't have any kids to begin with. Well, right, but my thing like, is, is like she's got an entire fucking bedroom in there full of toys, and you're telling her that she has to open that one to give it to her? Yeah, she's Are like, I fucked? just haven't unpacked them yet. Well, here's the thing. It's like literally like the next day. Yeah. It wasn't even like a, like a week. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, give her some time, dude. Like, she, she just got the kid. There. Yeah. Yeah, and then like like you said later, where did I have that written down at? Um... Uh, da, da, da. I don't remember. But I, yeah, I wrote the same thing down. I'm saying, you know, like, so, oh, yeah. The bitch psychiatrist makes a good point with the attachment theory and making emotional connections that she can't untangle. Yeah. She actually makes a good point. And my bigger issue with that is that she's making all this fuss in the beginning about fucking having uh, collectible toys that she won't let her play with, which is a non issue. Yeah. But this, she makes a good point about, and then she's like, "Okay, see you next Tuesday." She's not very helpful. Like she doesn't, she doesn't want to talk. Well, then about later it. on, she's in there trying to calm the girl down, and she, girl, the girl's spazzing out because yeah. she wants Megan, and she's like, about to get stabbed with a pair of scissors. It's like, okay, so yeah, where do you stand now on that? Once like, again, you, she makes the things that she could have been, yeah, you know, harping about and saying like, okay, yeah, this is a note. Like she's not. At all concerned about. Right. Not at all. <laughs> That's like I said, I think the... Ster- like, I understood the therapist being in the movie, but she wasn't well-written. No, the, the the points they were making with her were not good ones. They they really yeah. could have rounded that out a little better. So, the part where um, the dog bites the little girl, and that the cop that comes in and says... He says, oh, well, there's really nothing we can... Bullshit, dude. If a dog bites a kid, cops are all over that shit. Yeah, yeah so I said... They do what? not give a fuck about no dog. <laughs> well, I said the same thing. Anything, yeah. I said, what the fuck kind of laws does Washington have? Because around here, if a dog bites a kid, they get put down. They do. They get put down. That's... It's like what... you know. I, I think Jeremiah looked notes. it up. They don't have a... Uh, a put-down law or something, but... In Washington, they have to pay for their medical bills. 
Oh, yeah. See, Something that would make like sense. That. Yeah. And I don't that, believe that yeah. the dog should need to be put down because some dogs Not are first trained. strike anyway. Yeah. So, like, but, yeah, pay for the medical bill, bills at least. Yeah. yeah. You know? So, I had, like, two notes on that. You know, I first, when she for, first pulls in with a... Yeah, she know, was a dog. complete bitch to her the, neighbor. The neighbor was... Yeah, right she, off the bat. neighbor was trying to be nice, yeah. understandable. She's dealing with a lot and all that. I, under, I, I got that, and then the dog bit the girl. I was like, bad dog, fuck that neighbor. Right, <laughs> that is exactly because she didn't even well, blame the dog; she blamed it on the kids. She's yeah. like, dude, it doesn't matter, dude. Yeah. Your dog is a dog. Well, like, and the thing about it is that neighbor, that whole neighbor exchange. There's like, there's got to be like some background there that we're just not seeing, right? Yeah, because like, she starts out being a bitch to her right off the bat, and then that whole thing happens, and she's a bitch right back to her with no, like, there's just zero to one hundred, yeah. yeah, on either side with no reason for it really right. like it's just like well God, it's, it's happened? like their relationship progressed very rapidly mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. and it was weird so like i i also want to say that like you know th- this little girl like if she had a if i had a toy like bruce like when she introduced her to bruce i'm good i don't need anything else yeah i don't need megan right. uh, i don't need megan badass. like i got that i got bruce now yeah like i'm good i take him outside and play with him like come at me dog yeah you know what i mean i did i did like though when he um when they finally introduced Megan and she was working right or whatever, and his first his first response to her was more or less than a Tesla. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> more or less than a Tesla. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, depends on the model. <laughs> yeah, a Tesla is like really expensive. What do you yeah. mean? And I, you know, the thing I kind of I giggled so hard when she was talking about like how she was going to sell this thing, and she was like, you know, so you can do the things that really matter. Like parenting your child. I know that's right. I was matter. like, "Wow, dude, <laughs> good wow. for you!" Wow, like that. If if you show me that commercial, I'm gonna be like, "Click next." <laughs> yeah, I'm the parent. <laughs> this yeah. is my responsibility. Anybody else find the blinking unsettling? Anytime me, like Megan would blink, a little bit. Like it was weird. I don't know why it upset or if it unsettled me, but it did. I will say they did yeah, a really Megan good blinked. job of. Yeah, that she blinked. They did well, a really good job of transitioning between. Like actual robot Megan and oh, human. Oh, they did. Yeah, they, they did. Megan. I, I have, I no qualms about the animatronics. No qualms that's, about the. That's where I'm getting at with the. Blue yeah, they're, the, they're going to try to make it more human. Yeah, they. There was no. I if, mean, they did a great well, job. Yeah, they did I mean, a really you, good job. If you had some, if a person would just constantly stare at you, I know it would blink, be even be more getting, unsettling. That's but more it, unsettling to me. I think it was because it was so. It seemed forced. It wasn't like natural. It wasn't like a natural blink. It was just like, like, yeah. you know, I don't know. It just, I, I don't know. That little girl did a really good job, though. Yeah, she yeah, did. Yeah, she did. Uh, playing Megan. Um, the impromptu I got a singing. Question. Go ahead. It, it was weird to me. It was weird. When yeah. she would just start singing, I'm it like, it was weird. Yeah. Stop. You're it making it worse. Um, I will say that it was very, the part, I even said that. I said the demonstration with Megan and Katie was sweet the whole demonstration with her talking about her parents and yeah it was it was was very sweet until she started singing singing. yeah exactly until she started singing i was like that just ruined the whole moment Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you should have just left yeah like when she was like you know i'll keep it locked in and then she started singing it's like oh this got weird yeah that just got weird like you just made it bad again so i think that's where people were like it's funny like yeah because i think they were trying to go for something serious but didn't land i didn't get funny i didn't get funny i didn't get funny either i thought it was fucking stupid nope um so what did what did you what were you gonna say uh how was it when they get when they pair the kids up in that little camp <laughs> yeah why the hell would you pair a new kid with the kid you know is a bully the biggest like, asshole you you know he's he's a bad kid why would you pair the new kid you just got with him i liked how when they were making sandwiches she's trying to like make excuses for her kid like oh yeah he's, such oh, a, he's you know he's a, they always say the gifted have a uh, behavioral problem he ain't gonna have a behavioral problem when i stick my foot straight up his ass straight up his ass like, like my point is is every, every you know i i you know when i yeah. when i was in scouts and shit like that counseling and all that you never paired a new kid with someone who has who has issues. Yeah, because you're trying to bring kids, more kids to the camp, not fucking scare them off. Mm-hmm. That's the kid you lock up in a cage in the yeah. back of the. Yeah, you know? that's the kid. <laughs> yeah, you this know, kid doesn't exist. Today. He doesn't go to the school. That's yeah. the kid that has to be with the counselor. Yeah, um, I did say that I wasn't sad when he got hit by the car. 
I, I wrote, little asshole deserved it. Okay, not really. That's what I said. Brennan, <laughs> Brennan is an asshole, and I wasn't sad that he got hit. <laughs> I, it, did, I did say this, though. You know, the doll, Megan? Yeah. When she was telling the, the girl that bad kids deserve to be in hell, and heaven doesn't exist. Yeah. If I had been the... the the parent, because she was right there, wasn't she? Or the the guard, she was right there when she, the doll no, said that. No, uh-uh. no, it was just her, and, her okay. and Katie. Yeah, because I'm that, telling you, if, like, if I'd have uh, heard my my doll or my the doll I created say that to my kid, I'd be like, okay, time to turn it off. Yeah, Click for good. So they kind of set it up Not for true. a sequel in two different ways. Yeah. Um. So first off, the guy leaking the files out to whatever yeah. he's doing. Yep. Um. That's a good easy setup for yeah, a sequel. Yeah, I think they put that. Um, I mean, and then, uh, at the end of the movie with the, uh, home sort of Alexa device or whatever, turning and looking, it's almost as if she must have uploaded her conscious mm-hmm. self or something to whatever that cloud is or whatever, which yeah. Yeah. is 100% possible, I yeah. guess, with where they were going with the show or the movie. So did it sound like growling when she was on all fours? Did you guys hear that? That, yeah. that fucking creeped me out. That yeah. was a little weird. <laughs> and then so uh, megan's object objective is to protect katie right yeah, which yeah. Uh, which had, that made sense yeah completely She's her priority. up until she killed the neighbor lady yeah the neighbor lady posed no threat other than making a stink about her dog she posed well, a threat to their living situation yeah so she she came up and bounded How? on the window and was calling her yeah. out for staring out the window at three o'clock Constantly in the morning, trying to make threats, uh, making things harder on the family. Uh, she was becoming yeah. a threat. She was becoming a threat to to everybody in the home. Anyway, so it was time to take care of. This. Sure, but she also got caught by killing the neighbor lady. She also then couldn't protect Katie because she was a minimal threat compared to getting caught. As a computer, she should have been able to, to work those odds. Right. Maybe, I guess. But I'm not, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm not trying to throw fucking... Up until, up until the neighbor lady. Yeah. All of her kills were calculated and made sense. Well, kind With of. With the neighbor kind lady. Of. I say the boy wasn't really no, calculated. calculated. It was she could have never instinct. known that that it car was, was coming. Like... No, she may not have known that the car was coming, but she could have... She had it out. He had him out in the woods... She would have figured out a way to make it look like an actor. Yeah, she would have figured it out. I'm Except just saying. For she threw the ear. They found that's how they found the, the ear was way back in the woods, and that's how they consider it was a homicide. They never said it was a homicide. They yeah, said they it was did. an accident. The, the doctor, yeah. when the the Whatever the detective was, the detective came. Oh, back, well, said, I don't know. He said it's looking we're, like we're, a yeah, de- we're, uh, homicide. We're, we're investigating it as a homicide because um. we found the ear. And then he so giggled. Far away from well, yeah, the but like you, could, they could almost say that might have been an animal, though, until they got forensics back. Maybe, but it's and then it clean. was still wouldn't, but still not necessarily. I yeah, because it would have been would have been a robot. There wouldn't have been any real dental. There, yeah, there's no dental, of. and there's no there's no DNA there. Right. So, but I also I thought it was funny though. Whenever the the detective giggled about, it, he's like, "Sorry, I shouldn't laugh about that." Yeah. Yeah. I was like, "You fucking asshole." Yeah. But like. That that turned the ear off. That that made me a little squeamish. Yeah, that was a little squeamish. It was, that was weird. About the goriest part of yeah, the whole like movie. The fucking ear just was like all the way out. Yeah. Ugh. Like, it was weird for me to hear her say, um, "God, I hope not." I don't know why. When Megan said, "God, I hope not," when she said, "God, I hope not," I was like, "That's why." Don't what? talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> don't say things that are like why that. Don't say that. And why does she have to wear an ascot? I don't. I, that was weird to me too. Why the ascot? Oh, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's just how it's she's, weird. It's her style, man. I that's guess her, that's Mithragan's style. Uh, don't fuck with her swag. And that commercial <laughs> that they came out with and put her knee, her niece in that was crying bullshit. and talking about her parents dying. I would have fucking bullshit. Yeah, I would have shut. That Who the commercial fuck thought right. that was a good idea? Yeah, that was being the, fucked up. Her being the guardian, how? Why did she even let that happen? No they shit. They have to run that by the the guardian before they can run the ad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, and the sad so that, part is if the therapist was any kind of good right therapist there. and caught wind of that, 
Oh, she yeah. would be all over that. Oh shit. yeah, like, she would. She'd be more willing. Like you're to take flaunting that kid this little girl her, who just lost yeah. her parents in front of the world for your benefit. For your benefit, yeah. Yeah, she she had t- they had, t- had fucking CPS. All so that. Mm-hmm. I will say that some of the cine- cinematography in the movie w- was really good. Uh, yeah. So like the shot with the lady whenever she's coming, she walks up to that gate, and that shot down the uh, yeah. the beside the house through the gate at the old lady. Yeah, that was a good shot. Mm-hmm. I really thought that was really nice. Some of the shots in the woods were really nice. Um, hell, even a lot of the shots in the house and anything to do with Megan, they do a really good job with a lot of those shots. It just looks good and clean. And... The aesthetic of the film was very good. Yeah. Because one thing I noticed is the aunt is very techie, right? She's very tech savvy. Yeah. But they did a very good job. I don't know if you guys really noticed this, but it was something that kind of struck me. Um, like her collectibles, they were in the very 1950s. Her house had a very 1950s style. The furniture, the house itself, um, all of it seemed very, um, you know, 1950s. What's that uh, designer? Real famous back then. I can't remember his name, but that's the style of house she had. Um, And the style of furniture, all of it, was very 1950s. Um, But yet she's very techie. But if you think about it, in the 1950s, that's when they were kind of, like, pushing all of that uh, futuristic kind of stuff. So it's almost like she has that style, but she's also that tech savvy, you know? I just thought that was kind of neat, that they gave her that kind of style, but she's also that techie kind of person. I think they could have swung it a little bit. I think that the if they styled it more in vain with that... It, the movie would have looked way better, and it could have been more entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, what the movie really lacks, though, with in the in the uh, the gore department, one hundred percent. There's not enough kills. They kill off people who are like just bad people. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't kill anybody who you feel emotionally or attached to. Like the closest you come to is the neighbor. Yeah, the neighbor. But then, even then, like they could have killed off the two. Uh, her friends that work with her. They had the opportunity yeah, right there in their yeah. hands. And then they didn't even die. Yeah. They just got blown up and they're fine. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't understand like Which why. Which I knew they were going to be fine too, just the way it played the out. The way it played like, out, yeah. yeah. Be fine. But like, I'm just kind of like, why wouldn't Megan, you know what I mean? Like, she only kills bad people in this. There's no real consequence to this. None. No. Like, only bad people. Because I think only, Death Toll is only like, the boy... Uh, the boss and the helper, the neighbor lady, and the dog. Yeah. That's it. It yeah. was going to be the uh, Guardian, though, too. Huh? Yeah, it was, it's supposed to be much higher, but we'll get into that, I guess. But, yeah. yeah, I mean... <sighs> I just feel like it could have been could have benefited from being an R-rated movie yes, with straight-up gore and violence. They had it in their hands, man. And they just... They, 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 they fumbled the ball, in my opinion. And I don't care what anybody says if you like this movie or not, man. I just don't. I don't see it. I don't. Well, it's it's catering to a certain audience. Yeah, it's not catering to a it's horror. Not, yeah, you're a horror. It's not catering, gore catering to a horror audience. Yeah. It's not catering to uh, a comedy audience. It's catering to that tween audience. Yeah, people who can go watch the movie. Right mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, I found it. It was kind of weird to me that, like, you know, when in that final fight scene, like, when the, the like the doll's makeup was running, like, her mascara was, like, running down her face. Oh, yeah. I was like, why is it doing that? Why should it make on? Yeah. It shouldn't be, like, running. And who's doing her makeup every day? Maybe, I it's, guess, maybe like, it's melting. Why would it be melting, though? It was just water. Well, I mean, her, she got fucking chainsaw, or, or not a chainsaw, but, uh, that. Oh, a fucking hedge trimmer, hedge which yeah. looks completely yeah. unrealistic. Her, her face is all sparkly. Yeah. I was like a fucking hedge ceramic. trimmer. She has ceramic, like yeah, she had like and... plating and like. I thought it was titanium. Plating. It was like some kind of titanium or something. It was like <laughs> it metal. was underneath, but the 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 pl- the <laughs> exterior they said was ceramic plating, so that the skin was laying on top of the ceramic. Okay. So yeah, that... even then, still though, like them fucking hedge trimmers ain't gonna do no, that. Yeah, that was, that was something that, like. Those things would break before anything. Yeah. But even Fuck, still, get, why would that cause the... big the, and it stops the Why would that cause the paint to, like, 
run like she's been crying. Right. It. I was like, I don't. Well, I, seeing, I see you seen sparks and stuff come. I think the most entertaining maybe. part of this whole movie was in the last fifteen minutes of yeah. the movie. Oh, That's I more, agree. Well, I got more entertainment out of that because all the. You know the fighting, but it was that. it was kind of predictable though. You know, like you you knew that she was going to pull Bruce out. Oh, to for fight. sure. As soon as they introduced Bruce, it's like there's your final fight right there. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seen her face and the hair like was pulled off. I was like, yeah, that's Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's back, there's certainly a. I just thought, man, she looked sure. more like she could be my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I I did laugh out loud though. This was the only time that I thought was funny was when Megan called Katie a bitch. <laughs> Like, yeah, you bitch, <laughs> you ungrateful bitch, you ungrateful bitch. I was like, huh? okay then, right? Uh, so the pressure washer in the shed, yeah, sent that lady flying like ten yeah. feet. I was yeah. like, no, no, I've used a pressure washer before. That's no. not how those things work. That's not how that works at all. You could even you might get that out of like I don't know a fire hose. It could cut you before it push you. Yeah, it'll, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. it'll cut yeah, but the even shit then, out of you. Yeah. Even at that range, it still wouldn't hurt you. Uh-uh. No. You're getting blasted with some water, and that's about it. Like, that's not going to hurt you at all. I thought that was so dumb. I'm like, what the fuck? Sent her flying across the fucking place. Nice. And then launched a, launched a nail into her. So, nail guns don't work where you can just shoot them. No. no. They don't well, work like that. They have pressure uh, you pressure can, things on the ends of them. You can, like the staple guns and stuff like that. If you hold the certain plate back, you can shoot it. If, yeah, if you if, press the thing, if you you could set a screw in there. And yeah, but did she do that? I'm just saying. she just picked it up and started shooting it. Like, no, dude, nail guns don't work that you, way. You could set them up that way. I mean, I guess I'm sure she was in that garage setting it up that way. I'm sure she was in there for like an hour getting them all. Could have been ready, and I'm I'm just saying. I mean, you can set up the nail guns too too fire with the pull pull the trigger. <laughs> set set the uh, She's in pressure set. washer to. <laughs> not it. we took it off extreme of st- blast your face off <laughs> we took mode. it off of stun and now it's on kill <laughs> yeah i don't know i just thought that part was kind of dumb i'm like what how unrealistic like come on man it's not and i understand like the I, I mean look at the movie and the context the movie, but like for a pressure washer to send somebody flying 10 feet like and if that's like if that's anybody where... who's anybody has used or at least seen a pressure washer used before knows that that's just not what they do. Well, and if that's where I'm supposed to be finding the humor in this movie... Right. I, I, I'm, it's falling um, flat for me. Yeah. Like, sure. I can get behind ridiculousness. Yeah. But if it has it's to be go, done if right. It's gonna, like, if it's, it's going to go that campy route, then go that campy route. Yeah, you have to Don't have... Don't sell yourself short on it. You have to set you know? a precedent yeah. to stick with that... With that campiness, <laughs> like you can't just throw campy in from time to time yeah, and expect and, us yeah. to be like, "Oh, that's great," or even do it on do it on accident and be like, "Oh, yeah, that's what we meant to do." Like, no, no, you didn't. You, yeah, no, you didn't. You meant you meant <laughs> no, you, you were trying to make a serious movie and you fucking failed at it. So yeah. you're trying to oh, you're not you're not even trying to own up to what you did. I, um, I just, I just the to- death hole wasn't high enough. The I don't know, man. Bruce was Bruce was the coolest character in the whole movie. Agreed. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce was, was the Bruce coolest was character, and he didn't say a fucking word. Nope. All he did was stand up mm-hmm. and fight. Yeah, he was like a rock and sock and robot. Yeah, he was. So he was definitely the coolest character. Yeah, and he only had about I don't know forty five seconds of screen time. You know, we didn't <laughs> we didn't talk about would we watch again and all that. Oh yeah, yeah. We well, I think if you guys one. haven't figured it out, no, and and no. Um, the only way I'd watch this again is if they came out with the R cut. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The I'd watch again out. if they have an R cut. So I, yeah, I guess we didn't do that. Um, I'm gonna say no. I don't think I would watch this again. No, um, and I wouldn't really recommend it to other people. I'd tell them, I'd tell them, you know, go ahead and watch it. But like, I wouldn't. Watch it's it. not. I mean, it might I, be for some people. I'll, I'll say like I told people at work. You know, I'll you know if you'd like if you have interest in it, watch it once. Yeah, mm-hmm. watch but it. But for me, I won't watch it again. No, nope. I can I can walk in and say yeah I've watched it and um, I don't think I'd watch it again either. Um, maybe if it was on TV and everybody was watching it, you already or, watched it twice. I know I've already watched it twice. I've already put myself already, through it. Yeah, you already watched it again. So and I wasn't looking forward to it the second time because the more I watched it the first time, I was like yeah okay, I wasn't that bad. And then the the more I thought about it, I'm like 
I really don't think I like that movie. What were you smoking when you watched it? The well, first I was time? just kind of, it was one of those things where I wasn't like taking notes or anything. So I was just kind of like, I turned my brain off to watch it. Yeah. And then like, but the second time I t- had you to have my brain attention. on and I had to pay attention and write notes. And I'm like, I'm just so, like halfway through the movie, I was ready for it to be done. I was like, I don't want to, I don't like this movie. I don't think yeah. I like this movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I, because it's got so much buzz, I would, you know, I'd tell people like, yeah, watch it. But. I don't know why, You're, though. Yeah. I don't know what they saw in this movie. It, it's because of the audience that it was catered to. Well, not just 100%. that, but it's also a uh, a Blumhouse movie. And I think it's a Blumhouse see, and a Wan. And, and, a, one. and, and that's, a Wan that's what I've been trying to... Like, remember it's all about had, who you are. Think, remember I when think... we had this conversation, though, and you were talking about, oh, that's going to be a powerhouse? And I'm like, I don't think so. I you think right. I, don't know. I know I'm right. That's what happens when this sh- these people combine. I think a lot of this is geared towards That's like when they start parents. Up. You know how parents will put to put you know tablets and electronics and shit like that in their kids' hands. Oh, it's definitely geared just to, to yeah. you know shut them get, up. Yeah, and get them out. Get of them I mean, that's what I do. I mean, I do. I've done that. Just, <laughs> we've all done. Yeah, that. we've all been. But into we all need that break. That. But that's what kids are into nowadays. They don't yes. go out and ride their bikes no more. So I think that's what this is geared Terrible towards. Terrible parenting. I'm pretty Both sure that's you. what Fuck like you. I said, I'm pretty sure that's where this is geared towards. No, you know? it's it's actually it, it's the TikTok generation. It be, it blew up on TikTok. Yep. I think it's part of my trivia, but fuck it, we're here. It blew up on TikTok when they yeah. when they released the first uh trailer, the first uh teaser trailer. It blew up on TikTok. Just cuz So then they were like, "Oh, so this is this is big on TikTok. So we're gonna gear it towards that audience, and that's when it took a hard left into PG thirteen and out of R. Mm. I agree. No, that's that's what happened. Oh, is that what happened? That is what happened. So there is an R cut. I don't know. That'd be I'm sure there might be. Honestly, I think that an R cut would be. If there times is an R cut, I would watch it. Look at that. See it even time it tells me whenever it's about to shut off. Did it do it? Yeah. Did it? Do it the... counts down from thirty. But seconds. did it like? No, I had to fuck up. It did, but it went back. See, okay, but yeah, like it times me from like thirty <laughs> seconds down. Like, hey, we're about to shut off. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I was like, I didn't know if it would do that or not. So, so nice. you just kind of waited to see what it would do. No, I just, I just happened to look up and see it. Oh, well, that's good. So I'm glad I caught it. <laughs> good job. <laughs> um, let's go ahead. And so, did everybody pretty much cover everything? That yeah, I got them all my notes because so we'll I can't. Oh, dude, I can't wait to recast this bitch. Oh, I got a good uh, one too. Yeah. So, I forgot all about that. I, don't, I didn't write anything down because I oh, kind of want to wing it, but I've oh. got an idea Dude, I can't for a couple of them. You, I, I have such good ideas. I'm like, you guys go for it. I'm going to just kind of chime in because I forgot all about that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So first off, let's get into uh, our reviews yep. and do that. So let's go ahead and get into our personal reviews. Eric, what do you think, man? All right. So on, I'm going to get... I want to say a. F- I talk wanna, about I, it first. Don't yeah, go into yeah. your number yet. Uh, I always give my number first. Though. No, give all the reasons why. Don't be that way. All right. So my cons, <laughs> my cons are because one, it's not rated R. It's a slasher with minimal gore. It's not really scary except for the fact the lengths that you know people will go to to entertain their children. You know, that's that's kind of the scary thought yeah, process. Yeah, scarier parent, like scarier thought for a parent. Pros, I guess the realism that people will go with technology without thinking, you know, without the knowledge of the consequences that will ensue. The sad part is they do have the knowledge of the consequences. They but just they don't, don't give a shit. don't implement it. Yeah. That's where like, I'm They've seen at. enough fucking movies to know all right, that Terminator one and two, that's all anybody ever yeah, had that's to all see. You see. Yeah, exactly. All Terminator. the movies that we needed to see. I robot. Ever. Fucking anything that yeah. comes no, with you just had to see those first two movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, anything else that came out afterwards is just a, a, a an added bonus. Matrix. Yeah. I mean Yeah, just all that shit. Technology's going nuts, man. And like I said, it's just the links people will go to to try to better their lives without Make it easier, yeah. yeah Make it without, easier. Yeah, without you know, with minimal about, effort. Yeah, thinking about the consequences yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah. So that's kind of my pro on that, you know, the realism with that. But yeah, it's kind of a con to, you know, the lengths people go to with their children. So honestly, that's kind of where I'm at with that. I wasn't really into... 
the direction of the movie. Like I said, the direction of the movie just wasn't... Didn't it, land. Yeah, it didn't it's land. Not, it's nothing very original. So, I mean, maybe a four. A four? Four, maybe. Damn, okay. So that's right. about where I'm at with it. I wanted to give it higher, but okay. the more I think about that's it... That's actually what my daughter, Madison, that's what she gave it. She yeah, said a four. The more she I, didn't like it either. Man. The more I think about it, it and the more I, I talk about it, it's just... Not for you. No, huh? it's just not for me. I get it. What about you, Karen? What you got? So, uh, if we're gonna go pros and cons here, Eric had a lot of good points that I hadn't really considered, but um, I will say the animatronics, the way that Megan was, is probably the strongest case mm-hmm. that this movie has. Uh, the the animatronics the way they play into real people because you know they had real people playing her too. Yep. Uh, how that all played in together is probably the strongest case for this movie at all. Um, some of the uh, set pieces, like I said, I like the aunt's house and her, the way you got something coming up on the screen there. Oh, my battery's dying. That's not good. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, set pieces. Um, I like the aunt's house, her whole aesthetic there with her technology thing. Um, and, um, and then you get into the, uh, I like the, the smartness of the, you know, they gave her this learning thing. Like you said, you touched on it that, you know, they gave this robot some learning technology and then they were just like, go, go. We're not going to give you any direction. We're not going to try to teach you. It was sort of an allegory for what they were doing with Katie. You know, her parents just died, and they're like, here's a robot to help you. And they, they both were just winging it together. Right. Um, and, you know, it was terrible parenting, terrible everything. All the all of the adults in this movie failed Megan and that little girl. Right. Yeah. Um, so you can't really blame Megan completely uh, for what ended up happening. No. But... Uh, in any case, uh, the movie fails on so many other points. Uh, you touched on them quite a bit. Uh, we've all touched on them throughout the discussion. Um, you know, it it it's it's it doesn't know what it wants to be. It's trying to be a horror movie, and then it's trying to be funny, and then it's trying to be dramatic, dramatic, and it's trying to be this, and it's trying to be that, and it it fails on all of them because it's trying to be all of it, and um. So, you know, for all of those reasons and many more, I got to give it a four, too. Okay. It would be it would be lower if it weren't for the animatronics and the some of the aesthetics. And OK, things, but. so for me, I'm going to go I'm going to say that a lot of the cons for me are um, it's not an R-rated movie. It should have been so much gorier. The death toll should have been higher. Um, I think that the they could have leaned more into what whatever they were going for, whether it be action or I mean horror or comedy, whichever one it was, either way, it didn't land on either. Um it wasn't funny and it definitely wasn't scary. Um it had a couple of kind of almost freaky moments where she's like running on all fours. Like that was kind of weird. More, but you saw yeah. it in the trailer, so yeah. it was underwhelming in the movie. Yeah. yeah. The part where she's dancing could have been freakier, but it wasn't because you saw it so many times all over TikTok and and in the trailer. Um that wasn't freaky at all. And it, like you said, it, it happened too quick. fast. Underwhelmed. Very um, underwhelming. Uh, it just... Dude, just running back and forth in the hallways. Yeah, he's just like, <laughs> yeah. It made me laugh. It was so dumb and so quick, and it just, it didn't I land. like how he's telling him to close the door before he even gets in the elevator. Close the door! Okay. So, I didn't, I didn't care about that. I didn't care about... <sighs> The best part of the movie was the last, like I said, 15 minutes or so of the movie. The credits. Yeah, the credits. <laughs> the credits. Um, but I will say that the, the cinematography was good. The music was terrible. The score yeah, was, was yeah, not Yeah, I didn't even touch on that. Yeah, the score was bad. Um, the singing was awkward whenever she would sing. Oh, terrible. It was bad. Um, the uh, I get where they're going with that, though. I mean, it's going to be a robotic voice. So it's right, not, and I get why pitch. she was doing it. It was to soothe the kid or whatever. That wouldn't soothe me, though. I'd be like, will you fucking stop? No, would you stop? <laughs> Could you stop? Because so, you are scary. But I will yeah. say that there were some good things. I thought the acting was good. Uh, cinematography was good. The overall aesthetic of the movie, like, it was a good, crisp movie. Um, 
there were a lot there are some pros in there but they outweigh they outweigh the cons so i'm gonna come in and i'm gonna do it a little bit better and i'll give it a four and a half um would i watch it again i don't think so i don't really want to god you already did it <laughs> twice i've man. already done like it twice poor I think thing I've... <laughs> So and I'm still giving it a four and a half, uh, but it's just not. It's not. It's not my. It wasn't my cup of tea, Surprise man. His retinas give me, a, give me. If it was more gory and fun, or scary or something like that, yeah. give me something. But it wasn't any of those things. It was uh-uh. just like a lukewarm. Fucking. It's because they yeah. wanted it to. Like, they were like trying Karen to make it everything, they made, yeah. and yeah. They, they couldn't decide on what yeah. they were doing. They with didn't. It. They didn't. Couldn't figure out what they were doing. So there was. It wasn't fun. It wasn't scary. It wasn't exciting. It was just there. It was just a movie. You know what I mean? There was nothing that said, "Hey, we're 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 going for this." Yeah. You know, and they didn't land it. So, I just at four and a half. I just I couldn't. So from there, so we're gonna nice. get into our. Uh, let's go ahead and get into our Rotten Tomato stuff. Six. Hopefully, my camera don't die. What kind <laughs> of battery you need? It's whatever. It's a rechargeable one. Yeah. I don't even know how much they cost. I'm gonna have to get on Amazon and look. Um, so let's go ahead and get into our Rotten Tomatoes reviews. And you know how Rotten Tomatoes is going to be on this score. I, I got it. I I'm going to say it's a critic fucking heaven. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Mithrigan. 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 All right, let's start out with the, uh, the critics, cons- the critics score. Uh, 93. 93? 87. Karen took it, 94. Oh! Ho! Certified fresh. To, uh, critics consensus says... I politely disagree, but go ahead. All right. Uh, unapologetically silly and all the more entertaining for it. Make Mithrigan is the rare horror comedy that delivers chuckles as... Effortlessly as chills. I Did fucking... we miss fucking something? We Did we watch have. the wrong fucking movie? I'm telling movie? you, I think they buy critics sometimes something, on here. Something, because this is not... Um, mm. So, all right, let's do the audience score. Uh, I'm going to go lower on the audience score. I'm going with 87. 87. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to go 75. Eric will take this one. Ooh. 78%. Ooh. Well, I figured they were still giving it. No, they, they're, not as, they're not as fortunate. Well, at least they're being a little more honest and these and this is not a lie this can't be a lie because audience score has 200 or 2500 plus scores and the uh uh, and the critics are 287 reviews i was being generous that's a lot um so okay so audience says as long as you aren't looking for something truly scary or even surprising megan mithrigan is often a lot of fun i disagree Let's read some fucking negative yeah, reviews. Yeah, get some because negative ones. You know, then I can you know somebody's agreeing. on, somebody's on here bashing the shit out of this movie. I can but start I want, agreeing. I wanna, yeah. I got a half star here. All right. Okay, I can't believe how stupid and boring this storytelling is. You're not wrong. <laughs> but but why, though? Right, yeah. I, 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 mean, I still need to know. Yeah, give a give reason. You, yeah, here's a, a here's reason. a one and a half. It said, oh, hold on. Okay, it's not that terrible. I'm not sure why this movie got such a great, such great reviews. It had a very formulate plot with predictable ending it didn't have much of the dark comedy i expect from films of this genre and it wasn't particularly scary i also lacked any type of, it also lacked any type of thematic questions about ai that might have made the plot sub, uh, substan- substantive. substantive and interesting it was a disappointment See that makes sense. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was here's good. a uh, half star. Awful film, not scary and not that funny. Two hours of my life, I will never get back. That's fair. Yep, can't argue. Yep. He gave it. He gave it. Gave it yeah. Uh, let's see. Here. Let's do one more, and we'll get into what we're doing here. Okay, so here's another half star. Um, it says okay, absolutely, absolutely terrible. Did not laugh and walked into thinking. Walked into thinking it was horror. I got it for free and I feel cheated. <laughs> got it for free and felt cheated. 
give you know my, I do too. <laughs> give me my money back. <laughs> give me my money back. <laughs> <laughs> give me my money back. <laughs> Love Mark Instagram Mark Y Bed. Mark underscore Y. Give me my free money bed. back, bitch. <laughs> Two dollars. Give, give me my money, but I got it for free. But I want my money back. <laughs> Two dollars plus I tip. Into that movie theater, uh, said, bitch. bitch. <laughs> I want my money back. I want my money back. Okay, so you um, get it. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do trivia first? Let's do trivia first. Uh, Is trivia there first. a lot? Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, I'm just hoping my camera doesn't die. <laughs> I know. There's a. They're blinking on us. Fuck. If it starts blinking, then we might have to stop and change cameras or something. Okay. Which um, I, I know sucks, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the writer for the film said the body count was m- much higher and the film much gorier. He hopes that the unrated cut does get released. So, yeah, there is an unrated cut. Sweet. Okay. I'll, I'll watch that. I'll watch that, I too. will say I will watch the unrated cut and give it uh, give it its Maybe fair we'll shape. Maybe we'll come back to that. Megan's voice is modeled in part by another AI gone rogue, GLaDOS from Portal. Uh, this is most audible during scenes where her voice is auto-tuned to sound glitchy. Okay, yeah. Actually, my son, Gavin, plays that game. Portal. Yeah, I kind of noticed it when her voice her voice would glitch, glitch out. I thought to myself, it kind of sounds like GLaDOS. But I thought like I was just making that connection because that's what GLaDOS would do. But no, they did that on purpose. <laughs> Actors dressed as Megan showed up to the L.A. Rams uh, Chargers NFL game on 1-1-2023 to help promote the film. And they even uh, did a dance midfield during halftime. Yeah, the marketing for this... Was fucking insane. The room. I bet they spent millions of dollars on the marketing. Oh, yeah. Uh, the idea of the film began when James, James Wan's Atomic Monster Productions was brainstorming story, di- story ideas and chose one about a killer doll. Although Wan produced Annabelle, he said pretty much the concept is about embracing technology too much and relying too much on it and what happens when technology runs amok. It's a commentary on the world we live in and it feels relevant. And it also feels very overdone yeah yeah jason blum said is it bloom or blum i can never remember blum Blum. stated that the film would have black comedy elements fucking where right which is why gerard johnstone was chosen to direct saying we needed someone who can do thrills and set pieces but who also has a cheesy cheeky approach Juan admired johnstone's film housebound from 2014 if you guys have not seen that movie watch it uh i've thought about watching it I know oh it's fucking about. great I've, 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 it's I it's about. watch it um i will say he did a great job with that one uh because of his ability to balance the horror and comedy elements by creating a tone that is both frightening and humorous this sensibility sensibility was essential for megan again fucking where <laughs> um he did do a great job with housebound though i will say that um when the trailer went viral on TikTok, this is what I was talking about. When the trailer went viral on TikTok with teenagers, Universal Studios had the movie retooled to gear toward geared toward the younger audience, and that's where they fucked up. Uh, several sequences make references and homages to Child's Play. The focus shots on Katie, and some scenes are inspired by frames of Andy. And the battle between Gemma and Megan is inspired by the climax of Child's Play between Karen Barkley and Chucky. I didn't really get any of that. I didn't either. Um, I thought that was kind of a don't re- don't redo something because yeah. I did kind of get some of those vibes of child's play in yeah. here, and I'm like, why though? Why see, would you do I, that? See, I didn't I get, really get that at all. I got the only child's play vibes three. I got is a killer doll versus a but mom it's the, figure. It's, but... it's the reliance of that doll and the child and things like I that. See, yeah, I get I, I get three feelings from this movie. I get. The orphan, yeah. I get the child's play, and I get AI. Yeah, that's all that's three of those rolled. Three, in. It's really, it's really all three of those movie. movies rolled into this one movie. Yeah, uh, the physical design of Megan is based on screen icons of the fifties, like Audrey Hepburn, Grace Kelly, and Kim Novak. So I guess that's where the ascot came from. Uh, <laughs> Moreau or Marat, I'm not sure how you say it. FX Studios created uh, an animatronic puppet version of Megan that was used for dialogue. And close-ups. A second animatronic was used for certain scenes that was posable and could be used in stunts. Um, Megan making plans that work short-term but fall apart later, such as murdering Brandon or planning to make Gemma a vegetable, show that she's functionally a child who's still learning. While incredibly intelligent, 
Gemma provided no support or direction and just expected her to figure it out on her own. So we kind of touched on that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Kurt had been stealing secrets from his company. You talked about this. He was likely the reason why the rivals were able to produce a cheaper knockoff of the pets. He succeeded in copying Megan's da- data files. It's very likely he's already sold those to f- those files to another company or multiple, which means lots of duplicates being made. Also, the LC the LC angle, um, how she turns and looks at the out the door, indicating that Megan uploaded her files. Both of these have opened the door for the sequel. I already said that. I know <laughs> that's just part of the trivia, and that's all I have. All right. All right. That's some good stuff. It's for a new movie. That's actually a lot of trivia. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, this is where we get into the, uh, the, um, let's recast this bitch. Yeah. It's the best part of the whole show. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> it's so much fun. I um, hard on mine. I, I'm not, I didn't I get, excited. get anything in this one. So, so go. I'm going with, for my choice for Mithrigan, I'm going with Arnold Schwarzenegger. As, as, the, as the doll. Yeah, he's already played a fucking robot. Why not do it again? Sure. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. He comes in. He's like, he's like, he comes in. You ungrateful bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did so you imagine not, him you, singing? Her you're too? not reclassifying it all. It's still just going to be Megan as, as Megan. Oh, it's just to- No, it, yeah, it's totally you're Megan. Just, you're just re. It's just, just it's voice. just Arnold okay. Schwarzenegger. That's hilarious. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's hilarious. I, I don't know. Megan Arnold. Imagine him wearing the clothes should, and the long hair. Yeah, you should make him dress <laughs> With the that ascot. Way. Yeah, the ascot. Yeah, he has to part. do the dance. Yeah, oh, totally he has, has to, do the dance. to do the dance. <laughs> he's totally got to do the dance and everything. For sure. He's got to come he's in. He's like, got to do the little gig. Wall. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing that right now. It's fucking great. <laughs> And I'm not that, talking Terminator 2. Honestly. Somebody has to deep fake that just so I can I'm talking, see it. <laughs> I'm talking totally jacked, like Conan, the Terminator 1, <laughs> fucking Arnold. Like, old school Arnold. In an ascot. Yeah, in an ascot. <laughs> like his bodybuilding days. Uh, oh, God. That would be the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Get to the chopper! Get back here, you stupid little bitch. <laughs> I will rip your head off of your neck. <laughs> uh, I love it. I'm doing that. That's good. Okay. So what, what do you got, Karen? Uh, <laughs> I reclassified and recast it. So my okay. Megan is going to be a coming of age story, sort of in the vein of Stand By Me, but it has a comedy spin. So Gemma is going to be played by Jennifer Carpenter. You know, the Deb from... Yeah, yeah. But she got to be played like Deb, so she curses a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, Katie is going to be McKenna Grace. That's the lady, or the girl who played Egon's granddaughter. And Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like her. She's a good actress. Yeah. And um, Megan is going to be Alita. <laughs> Alita will play Megan. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then Bruce... Because nobody's surviving. Right. Nobody's surviving. Fuck no. Everybody <laughs> does. She's just Everybody's dead body. already. Well, no, this is a coming of age tale, so Megan's good. Uh, yeah, no. Reclassifying. She's standing over the whole b- pile of dead bodies. Yeah, this is this is a this I is don't a... like that. I think you should do that with Arnold you, Schwarzenegger. No, we were reclassifying and we're supposed to reclassify it's, and it's recast. It's her it's her it's her. I know, but like to put Alita in there, she just then she's likable. Well, no, she's like Katie's protector. Right. They're going on like a like a stand by me adventure. How about we recast Katie as Arnold? No, there's and no then Arnold Alita is the protector. There is no Arnold in mine. That you're, Arnold you want to see? The, you want to hear the best fucking one? Yeah, Bruce is in my story. Would you like to hear hey, his playing Bruce? I hear it. Ar- yeah. Arnold doesn't need protecting, so he couldn't be. No, he does now. You seen how old he is? <laughs> Do you want to know who's playing Bruce? Yeah, Marvin from Hitchhiker's Guide. Oh um, my. <laughs> <God. laughs> oh yeah, that's good because he actually does talk. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> That's that's my whole. Oh, that's whole good one. shit, you need man. You get the fucking oh, is that a thinking mind? I just I'm just imagining him walking down like those um, the uh, railroad tracks, Marvin. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, I'm thinking like you get Arnold in there to play Megan, and then you get uh, like fucking um Edward Furlong in there to play Katie, and then uh um Sarah Connor in there to play uh what's her face Gemma. Nah, I like mine better. That's it, dude. That's all. Nah, I like mine better. Yeah. Because mine's got a comedic spin. 
Mine's supposed to be like. So movie. does mine. No, it's not Terminator anymore. That's a fucking comedy. You do your own. You, you I mean, do your own. Arnold Schwarzenegger prancing around in a you little stay dress. Out of mine. Yeah, right, and the dancing. Mine. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's pretty fucking comedy. This is mine. Mine is I already reclassified, that's, that's redone. Fine. Mine's done. Stand by me, with those people. Stand by me with those people. Mm-hmm. All right, I've already got your next movie casted. I have not gotten there. I've already gotten your next movie casted. I pro- I do have some in mind actually, but yeah. I fucking love that movie. I'm, I've already got it casted. I, I already it. know what I'm oh, doing yeah. with. It. So it. anyway, uh, so um, so yeah, I hated. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't really like Megan. He he hasn't done his yet. Oh, I, I, oh I yeah, just you went with you one. guys because yeah, I, I had nothing to... on this one. He had nothing. I, on. He had nothing. I had nothing. He was nothing. done with Megan. Right. He was I, just I, done. I pulled a Karen this week. I, I, hey, I, I did the last last two weeks. I have put my heart and soul <laughs> into, into it, recasting it. Yeah. <laughs> so I gotta say, this movie it was it wasn't good. Uh-uh. I don't re- recommend watching it um, or watch it just out of pure curiosity. If they come out with the unrated version, I'll totally watch oh, yeah. that. Watch. Absolutely, I want to like see said, that uncut. We, yeah. we should uh, Ray- R- come back to it if they do a rated R. If they release a rated R, I don't know about rewatching it. it. Maybe doing like. Maybe doing like a thirty minute or an hour long podcast yeah, on like it. Yeah, bonus, bonus, something like a little feature. bonus or something like, hey, we're gonna revisit this yeah. as like a bonus episode. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Do that. you know, something like that. Maybe that's a maybe. Only if it's good. But, yeah, yeah, if it's good. only if it's good because I don't want to waste terrible, more of my yeah, life if it's on terrible. reviewing it if it's not even. Yeah, like good. one of us can be the we, test we, dummy. We, like, we, hey, yeah. I'll watch it. We I'll could, take one for the team. I'll take one for the team. And then we could just like all get just on like, text and just yeah. Like, if you it's know good, what? then maybe we could do a little no. mini cast on it. I don't know. Like, we should just all agree if we watch it, we all agree either we do the podcast or we don't. Yeah. Or we just dedicate a little bit of one, you know, episode to it, like. Give it a good ten minute shake on ten minute spiel. Hey, you should watch the. Yeah, this archive. is why you should watch the unrated version instead of the PG thirteen yeah. version. Don't don't do the PG thirteen version just in general. Yeah, just, just don't. don't do that one at all. If it comes out with an try, ad, yeah. try your best to wait it out for the rated R one. Yeah. Yeah. If they if they put anything in there that remotely says, "Hey, we we vamp this up," mm-hmm. whether it be the gore, the comedy. Hell, even the action, the kill count, anything. Anything at all. Ramp it up and give me something. Yeah. Because this movie was very, very underwhelming, and I don't know how the fuck it made so much money or why it has the score it has on Rotten Tomatoes. Blows my mind. I this Movies like this, it's like Matt said, I think they're buying reviews. Well, but the box office numbers don't lie either. And I think yeah. I think that's the buzz, right? The buzz that it. And created. I think you're right. I think it's just appealing to a different kind of audience, like a younger. But audience. there again, has it been drop? I haven't paid attention since the first weekend. Has the numbers been dropping? What the the box enough box office? I oh, I don't idea. know. You know what I'm saying? Know. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I'd have to look into that. But like, you know, if the numbers aren't dropping, then I guess it just plays into you know idiocracy working guess, its way yeah. through our right. generations, but. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> That's a whole other fucking game right there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Karen, you want to tell them what we're watching next week? Yeah. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me lay the groundwork for this. So next week is Karen's pick. We're not pulling anything out of the box for this one because this is a special pick, and this is one that she's wanted to do for Valentine's Day. I made I made this decision last year Yeah. Like because this is like my favorite romantic movie in the world. <laughs> I was part of this. Everybody's laughing at me cuz and you guys will get it. So, um I'm not a very I'm not a normal girl um in any you I guess plot probably. synopsis and everything. Yeah. Okay. Uh so I'm not a normal girl uh and this is literally like the most romantic movie I know. So, uh it's called True Romance and uh it's uh written by Tarantino. <laughs> he actually sold the rights sold the Sold the uh, um, script to this movie to uh, f- and use that money to do Reservoir Dogs. Yes. Is it streaming? Uh, no, but I own it. I'll let you borrow it. Okay. Of course, I fucking own it. Uh, no, so this is uh, this was this movie it's was made in ninety three, so it's a bit older. But I'm hoping the the cult fans will be into this. I think they will. I hope so. So, uh, in the vein of romance and it being uh, you know, close to. Valentine's Day. 
True Romance. Um, Clarence marries Hooker, Alabama, steals cocaine from her pimp, and tries to sell it in Hollywood while the owners of the coke try to reclaim it. Lots of shooting, lots of death, lots of love and romance and hearts and happiness. There are so many good actors in this movie. Yes, uh, there is. I will will say some people here. Some. So Christian Slater plays Clarence. Patricia Arquette is Alabama. Michael Rappaport. Uh, Bronson Pinchot, Gary Oldman, Dennis Gary Hopper. Gary Oldman's the shit. Christopher, yes, he is. He is so fucking <laughs> He's so good great in this, in this movie. movie. Christopher Walken. Oh. And we're done. Oh, hold on. No, we're not. What's going on? I don't know. What'd you do? I didn't do nothing. It just like went back. You broke it. I didn't do nothing. It's blanking. <laughs> we're still talking. Yeah. Um. Brad Pitt. We're not done. Tom Sizemore. Oh, wait. wait Samuel L. Jackson. Do? I think it turned off. I think your battery went dead. So I guess we just talk. We're just talking. Hold on. It's got green. It's flushing green, though. It's doing something. Sorry. We're experiencing technical technical difficulties. Right, fuck it. I think it's still good. Yeah, we should have one of those, like... Uh, you need a no, you need one of those, like, um, <sighs> circular things that says, you know, like... We're experiencing technical difficulties. Oh, yeah, I can put that on there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, fuck it. It's the end of the show. I mean, right. we're almost it. there. So just bear with us. Yeah, you just can't see us now. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, it's a little. Uh, it's two hours exactly. Rated R, like some movies should have been. And uh, yeah, um, if you've not seen this movie, you really should watch it. Yeah, Eric, uh, you're gonna. I can tell you I'm right sure now. I'm sure I've already watched it living with your ass. For See, now long. Karen bitches Maybe. and complains. She's like, you don't like anything I pick. <laughs> I can tell you right now, I'm already going to give this one a high score because I fucking love it. I've loved, like, I love anything Tarantino. Oh, mm-hmm. I want Tarantino and your ass. This is, the, this is one of the first <laughs> things he wrote. And this, and you're talking about a motherfucker that knows movies. And uh, I'm, I'm, I will. I literally um, told somebody to watch this one time, and it was a it was another girl, and um, she was talking about like romance movies and stuff, and like it was one of those times where I was like really sick of just listening to it, right? Like her lovey dovey bullshit. And I was like, "Have you ever seen True Romance?" And she's like, "No." I'm like, "Oh, you should oh, it's watch so it. It's, it's, it's so sweet film. and it's yeah. so nice." And she came in like two or three days later or whatever, and she was like. So I watched like a half an hour of that. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. It's fucking. I think it, I think it's very romantic. That's back in like Christian Slater's glory days. Too. Oh yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. What was that uh, one movie he did where he was? Uh, he was the radio. On, he, he was oh, uh, pump radio. up the jam. Or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, pump up the volume. The pump up the volume. Pump up the jam. And that was another <laughs> really good movie. Oh. Sorry, that was on Paradise PD. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was like, I'm about to sound pump up his yeah he starts see that's why i was thinking about it sorry uh so anyway um so next week we are doing this is kind of a short episode true true romance. Romance. um so next week we're doing true romance um join us be there and this will be our valentine's day pick special yeah it's our valentine's day special a little um, early but not well it's because it was my pick, and I, I had to, say, well, I had this picked out. Our like, next pick will be after th- yeah. after Valentine's Day. Yeah, that's so. true. Yeah. Um. So, am I supposed to find a movie to pick, or do you guys want me? We're to gonna pick? pick out of this. Yeah. Okay. Um. So we're gonna do that, and then we'll be back to picking out of the box, unless something else comes out that we need to cover. But I don't, I don't know what the hell could be out. Violent um, Night. <laughs> Violent Night. That's more of a Christmas movie. We could cover that over Christmas. Fuck it. We'll I'm cover, sure we will. We'll cover, actually, we'll cover it in well, June. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Huh? We'll cover it in June. Like Christmas in June. In June. In June. Christmas in June. <laughs> no, isn't it Christmas in July? Wait. Oh, yeah. It's Christmas in July. <laughs> yeah, <April>. July. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so join us next week. Um, I know you can't see us anymore, but it is what it is. Uh, so join us next week. We're going to do True Romance, uh, uh, written by Quentin Tarantino. Uh, and uh, until then, we will see you. Hear you? No, actually, one of that. We'll we'll feel you. <laughs> we'll feel your eyes upon us. We will feel you. Oh. I already feel you. Oh god, <laughs> just so fucking sexual. <laughs> it's not se- what's sexual about that. Get oh. your mind out of the gutter. Oh, okay. Yep. Get your it's mind me. out of the gutter. Me. Yeah, yep. it's you. That's me. His yeah. pants are rising. Don't let him lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a good thing. it's a good thing the video camera stopped. Someone around here is pitching tents. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like camping.
You guys, I went camping last week and it was fucking intense. <laughs> <laughs> Some driftwood there. Oh, <laughs> my stepdad tells me that joke. That, all the I time. love that. I love that joke. Joke. Yeah, that's a good Such one. Such a good joke. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just stalling. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Okay. Bye.